Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have questions about formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. If you have a comment or success story, we love hearing success stories, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products or sign up to join the bright side, Ben, team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, get your products at the wholesale price, work out of your home, right off your, right off your home office, enjoy the tax benefits associated with having your own business. Call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Or sign up to join at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com criticalhealthnews.com. That's brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Also, would like to remind you to check out our truth treatment products, retinol 5% gel. If you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, melasma, dark spots on your skin, aging skin, thinning skin, retinol is your go-to active ingredient. Nada, nothing. Zippo. There is no ingredient on planet Earth that is more important. In fact, only vitamin C is as important as vitamin A for, top, for taking care of your skin topically, for topical skin health. And it really is a question of health. It's not just skin care. I don't even like that, I don't even like that term, skin care. It's been so corrupted and diluted and adulterated and polluted by marketers and salespeople who, and, and companies, uh, uh, corporations that could care less about our skin. So uh, they came up with this idea of skin care, actually. When skin care started, we really didn't even know what much about the skin. The skincare business really got going in the turn of the 19th century, in the turn of the 20th century, late 19th century, the 1880s, 1890s. It all began with a lady named Helena Rubinstein. You may have heard of a, a makeup company, I believe, that's named Helena Rubinstein. Helena Rubinstein is the, the grandmother or the godmother or the mother of the skincare business as we know it today. She was a Russian lady, came off the boat in Russia, uh, from Russia to the United States in the late 19th century. And, uh, She'd been making little concoctions in her kitchen in Russia, and uh, she came here penniless, basically, and didn't know what to do, didn't have any, really any skills, so she started making her skincare concoction, and this was the late 19th century. Nobody really knew about skincare. The only people who, who paid attention to the, their skin were prostitutes and actresses, uh, for, and it was considered actually kind of taboo for the average woman to take care of her skin. Helena Rubinstein changed all that. She said, hey... Women, you can express your femininity, your power as a woman. This was a, getting to be the t early 20th century when the women's lib movement really began, the women's liberation movement that didn't really begin in the 60s and 70s. It began in the turn, turn of the 20th century. And um, anyway, so uh, women started buying her concoction. But here's the point. When Helena Rubinstein was making her little concoction, we didn't even know what the skin was. We had no idea what the skin was. Helena Rubinstein didn't know nothing about the skin. And she was making products that basically just you rub on your skin and, and, and 
makes your skin feel smooth, but it's not, you're not doing anything to your skin, you're feeling the wax and the oil from the product. So it was a big scam from the, from the get-go. Now she didn't know, she wasn't a scam artist, but she didn't know, because we really didn't understand the skin until, guess, check this out. We didn't really understand what was in the skin or how the skin worked or how disease began or how aging took place until like the 1980s and 1990s. Really, maybe the, you could, a case could be made the 1950s and 1960s, but really, when I started studying the skin in the late 19, in the, in 1980s, I used to have, one of my jobs was to go to the library and do research, skin research. I was doing skin research when I was in my early 20s, hardcore for a professor, and they, we didn't really know. There was the, the stuff about the skin that we know, take for granted today, the genetic nature of the skin, the fibroblastic nature of the skin, and how you can drive the cells to make things happen, and all the things that happen, and all the subcomponents, th these were all discovered and really studied for the first time in the late 1980s and 1990s, a little bit before, perhaps, but really didn't get going until the late 1980s or 1990s. And So if you're using a skincare product today, like 99.99% of people are, that was that, that is based in the ideas of Helena Rubinstein, a wax and an oil and water and silicon and preservative and nothing that does nothing for your skin, <laughs> excuse me, except maybe if you're lucky you get a speck of something or if you go to a, a, a high, use a, a medical grade line, you might get a little bit of something, but it still doesn't leverage the potential that skin, that topical skin products when formulated correctly can have for your skin. The incredible benefits you can get from topical skin products, keeping in mind the skin is an organ. You need to be using your nutritional supplements and dietary strategies. But products today, none of them, with one exception, the truth, leverage the potential of a topical skin product to change the skin topically. I discovered it in the compounding pharmacy. And the truth is, it is the culmination of everything I learned as a compounding dermatological pharmacist. And it wasn't just a compounding pharmacist. I was a compounding dermatological pharmacist. I studied the skin and its interaction with compounded topical products. And the truth represents the culmination of everything that I learned as a compounding dermatological pharmacist. How you anti-age the skin, how you heal the skin, how you lighten and brighten the skin, how you create a, a look of health on the skin. And that's what the truth is. That's why I call it the truth, because that's what we really want when we want uh, when we apply our topical skin product. That's a long commercial, but that's the truth. No pun intended, or maybe pun intended. Anyway, go to truthtreatments.com if you want to purchase any of the products or learn more about our truth skin health products. Truthtreatments.com. Okay, thanks for joining us on the bright side once again. We're talking melatonin. Melatonin is well known, obviously. Almost everybody listening to this program knows that melatonin helps you sleep. Everybody knows that. It's in our Sleepies Longevity product. A little bit of melatonin, and it does help you sleep, absolutely. It even gives you wonderful dreams, especially when you first start using melatonin. One of the problems with melatonin, and this is why you want to be careful with it, it's not one of the mighty 90 essential nutrients. One of the problems with melatonin is tolerance. So you'll take your melatonin, the first time you do it, especially if you're in your 40s or 50s and you never took melatonin before, the first time you take a small dose, oh my God, you are gonna get the best night's sleep you got ever got, and on top of that, you're gonna have great dreams, because melatonin is a brain, drug, a brain substance. So not only are you gonna relax, but you're gonna have the most awesome dreams, but here's the problem, and it's significant. You will develop a tolerance your body will down-regulate, especially if you take high doses of melatonin, even physiologically high. That is not high in numbers, but high to your body. Body only secretes tiny amounts of melatonin. When you take three or six milligrams, you can really go into tolerance pretty quickly. But you're going to like the sleep so much and the dream so much that it's hard to like stop doing it. So when you first start taking melatonin, don't take it every night. Skip nights. Mix it up a little bit. Uh, if you start to get tolerance, that's definitely a reason to kind of back down on it. Um, so melatonin, everybody knows it's a brain drug for sleep. But here's the thing. Melatonin is not mostly a brain drug or brain substance, not drug. Brain substance, brain uh, a therapeutic agent, if you will. Melatonin is a substance that is mostly found inside the body, in a special place inside the body. And this is so important because we miss out on a very powerful way to treat some pretty, pretty common uh, and troubling health conditions. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Any
skin health advocate. That's what I want to be, is an advocate for you. There's so much misleading, mendacious marketing baloney out there thrown at us in the world of nutrition, in the world of diet, in the world of healthcare, in the world of how we take care of ourselves. It's just so unfair. Health is not complicated. Health is not complicated because the body is designed to be healthy. It has evolved to be healthy. That's the only thing we got to know. We got to sit there and think about it for a second. The body has evolved over millions of years, hundreds of thousands in this specific form, to be healthy, to heal, to self-repair. Think of a tire that gets a hole in it and it just self-repairs. In the future, the new textiles, the new um, materials that we make things with, clothes and buildings and um, desks and furniture, etc., cetera, the, the, the textiles and the stuff we build things with will all be self-repairing. Well, the body has accomplished this already. It is a self-repairing, self-healing system. The ups go down and the downs go up. It pulls things back the way they should be all the time. In fact, it does it, the bone is stronger at the point of the break. So when the body repairs itself, often it'll repair itself stronger. Not just repair itself, repair itself stronger. So if we're suffering from a D generative disease, that means something has gone wrong with this healing, self-repairing, regenerative process. The body regenerates. It's built in. It doesn't need a doctor. It doesn't need a middleman. Medicine comes from the word middle. Medicine man. Middle man. Don't, we don't need a middleman to take their cut out of, the, out of the process. That's basically what a middleman's doing. It doesn't even help us. Because the problem is not medical. It's not there's not, it's not like there's something wrong with us. It's so we're missing something or we put something in that shouldn't be. And it's a, really as simple as that. The wrong stuff is getting in. The right stuff isn't. And that's all we need to know. What is the wrong stuff that's getting in? What is the right stuff that isn't? Repair that. Correct that. And the body can do the rest. So we'll show you how to do that at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything that's going wrong in your or a loved one's body, or if you want some, uh, if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010. Check out our Longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, and our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. So we're talking melatonin. Melatonin is well known as being a mental or brain drug, brain substance, and it, indeed it is, but melatonin is a powerful, powerful, powerful antioxidant. One of nature's most powerful antioxidants, or one of the biological world's most powerful antioxidants, melatonin is. So it's going to have multiple benefits, and it especially has benefits in the digestive system. In fact, that's the, where you'll find most of the melatonin in the body, like serotonin, to which it is related. Serotonin and melatonin are very similar, so it makes sense that serotonin and melatonin would both be largely digestive sub substances. In 2013, an article was published in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences. They showed that melatonin levels were lower in patients with heartburn and GERD and, st and a recurrent stomach ulcers. Another one from the Journal of Pineal Research, March 2009, melatonin pretreatment significantly reduced the lesions and esophageal symptoms in rats who have GERD, G-E-R-D, stands for gastroesophageal. That's just simply a fancy way of saying the stomach and the, and the esophagus. Your th the, the tube that runs into your stomach. A reflux disease, you can just call it reflux, acid reflux. Man, is that miserable. I've had it enough times to know. Man, is that miserable. I can only imagine what people live with, having it all the time. Get on melatonin. There's all kinds of studies that talk about melatonin helping with GERD, G-E-R-D. Melatonin levels... Uh, <laughs> Melatonin, level, melatonin is made in the cells of the intestine, so melatonin levels can drop when you have some kind of disruption in those cells, leaky gut syndrome, any kind of uh, gluten intolerance, celiac disease, anything that disrupts the, cells of the, the health of the cells of the intestine will lower your production of melatonin, and that can have its own problems. Melatonin, um, by the way, uh, GERD and heartburn, these are not acid issues. These are, uh, these are uh, sphincter issues. That tube your esophagus that runs into the stomach is connected at the level of the stomach by a sphincter. 
which is like a little valve. It opens and closes. That valve is responsible for keeping acid in the stomach where it belongs. However, over time, that valve can become a little loose, especially if there's constant pressure coming upwards because your bacteria are off, your microbiome are off. When the bacteria are off, they emit gases, and that, that wrecks everything. Again, that's the start of all health challenges, including heartburn. So anyway, it's a sphincter problem. It's not an acid problem. And there's lots of foods that will loosen that sphincter. Mostly they're cortisol-inducing foods, sugar kind of foods, caffeine-containing foods, sometimes chocolate will do it. Um, over time, that sphincter becomes loose, flabby, and uh, acid can splash back up. Well, melatonin is helpful at tightening that, helps tighten that sphincter, has, a, has a, uh, an effect on that sphincter, makes that sphincter healthier thereby uh, keeping the acid where it belongs and keeping it away from where it doesn't belong, that is in your esophagus. And by, uh, esophageal cancer is nothing, no joke, one of the leading de causes of death by cancer, esophageal cancer. And, uh, and it uh, can be related to excessive acid splashing into the esophagus. So you don't want that. That's called the condition called Barrett's esophagus, and it is not nice. It's, aw it's awful. Well, there's so many awful things that can happen to the body it's just, it, it's tragic. It really is that we have so much control over our bodies and all of this stuff happens. In 2010, there was a 40-day study published in the journal BMC Gastroenterology. It showed that melatonin was effective at relieving the symptoms of acid reflux, especially when taken with Nexium. Nexium, one of the best-selling drugs. It's like third or fourth every year in terms of best-selling drugs, uh, best-selling prescription drugs. Of course, it's also available OTC, over-the-counter. Researchers gave Nexium to 175 patients. 176 patients received melatonin with their Nexium. And all the patients who were given, 66% 66 of the patients who took the Nexium got good results. But all of the patients who were given the melatonin, 100% of the patients who were given the melatonin experienced complete disappearance of their symptoms compared to 66% of those who just took the Nexium. So melatonin, uh, uh, melatonin is, uh, helps with the sphincter, heartburn, GERD. These are not acid problems. They're sphincter problems. I'll tell you what else. Another stomach health issue, uh, digestive health issue that melatonin can help with is ulcers. And this is another interesting story, also the story of uh, stomach ulcers. I remember when I was a pharmacy school student and when I first graduated pharmacy school, the best selling drugs were two drugs called Zantac and Tagamet. I think you can still get them, the Zantac and Tagamet. Uh, I, actually, I know you can still get them, but, but uh, I think they might be over the counter at this point. But back then in the 1980s, uh, Zantac and Tagamet were the go-to drugs for ulcers. And man, we're, we were selling a lot of Zantac and Tagamet. I was counting out 100 pill bottles of Zantac and Tagamet all day long. But then they found out something interesting that ulcers weren't about acid. And today, if you go, uh, they don't give you Tagamet. Today, if you go to the doctor, he tells you have an ulcer. They don't give you Tagamet. They give you something else. And it's a very interesting story here. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue when we come back from our break. And take your calls to 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. We are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here. And we do have lines open at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in a sec. If you want to check out our Longevity products, please go to brights, uh, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We have archi uh, archives and search engines and archives at benfuchsarchives.com, benfuchsarchive.com, both, as well as, uh, thank you, by the way, to Peter in the UK for setting that up as well as brightsideben.com, and you can purchase Longevity products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. I uh, would love to have you on the Brightside Ben team. I'll be in Sacramento, by the way, helping build uh, one of our uh, team members' businesses. In fact, uh, I probably should get the dates and everything. It'll be next, next week, next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, that is the... Uh, that would be the 26th, the 27th, and the 28th of January. I'll be in Sacramento in the Sacramento area, and I'm going to have to wait till our next break to get to the info because I don't have it off the top of my head here. 
Um, if you're out there listening and you know where it's going to be at, why don't you, give, you can give me a call and you can tell our listeners. But I'll, I'll, I'll get the information on our break. If you're in the Sacramento, Sacramento area, I'd love to see you. That's uh, not this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, but next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 26th, 27th, 28th. Okay, let's see if, uh, you know what, I'm going to hit the phones here. We'll talk tomorrow. We'll continue talking about melatonin. I'm going to tell you an interesting story about uh, how, about this whole idea of ulcers and uh, acid and Zantac and Tagamet and melatonin. And it's a really interesting story. And it's an example of what is wrong uh, with our medical model and why you can't really pay attention to what the standard, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the typical or standard or mainstream, mainstream information is about health and about the body. Science moves very slowly. Medicine changes very slowly. Science progresses funeral by funeral. That's a famous quote from Thomas Kuhn who wrote a book called The Structure of Scientific Revolutions and where he studied how science changes over the course of history. It's a, it was a classic book from the 1960s. And in the book, there's a quote that says, science progresses funeral by funeral, meaning, meaning the old guard has to die out before new information reaches us. The problem is, while the old guard, before the old guard is dying out, they're spreading wrong information, wrong health information, causing all kinds of havoc until they die out. That's where the cholesterol hypothesis of heart disease is, go is heading, by the way. Used to be acid causes ulcers. No, now we know it's something completely different, and it's a really interesting story that's behind that, which we'll talk about tomorrow as we continue talking melatonin and serotonin and also uh, the stress hormone cortisol. I've not forgotten about that because that's next, uh, the stress hormone cortisol and how all of these, the, uh, the role that all of these uh, very important substances play in terms of the health of the body and all in their relationship to light and the pineal gland. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Ray in California who has been holding on for a while here. Good morning, Ray. Welcome to the Bright Side. Thank you. Let's, what's going on? I have a little well, bad, yes, I'm calling. Okay. Have bad connection. Um, we have a bad connection up. here. Oh, can you hear me okay now? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, a year ago, I was diagnosed with uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. Okay. And then I've uh, exhibited the classic symptoms. So, where, How old are you? Uh, How off. old are you, Ray? I am 64 years old. Okay. So this is this is great. We're gonna. You, you could be a new man in six months or a year, but you got to change your life big time. Big time. So you got to, body can turn on a dime, but you got to turn on, but you have to turn on a dime first, and then the body will follow. And you see, you got to, so major changes to make in your life. You got a new normal. So, uh, what, well, tell me about your life before you were 64. Did you have blood pressure issues or any, were you on any medication or digestive issues? What, what happened? You had had something. You didn't just wake up one morning with Lou Gehrig's disease. That was pretty much it, basically, because uh, my wife and I have been uh, very much into health for many years. She's been studying health, uh, uh, ways to improve her health for many years. And she was 20 years old. She's 70, by the way. Okay. And that's... Uh, we're very strong advocates of good nutrition, good eating habits, right. good rest, all the above. That's going to serve you very well. Pro but do not underestimate, do not underestimate the, uh, the likelihood, the very had the very, very pow uh, important likelihood that you were doing things wrong. You would not have the condition. It did not pop out of the sky. And I'm not saying this to beat you up, Ray. I'm saying this to give you your power back so you become more powerful. If you say, I was just sitting around watching TV, buying my own business, and boom, I got Lou Gehrig's disease, you lost your power. You have nothing, there's nothing you do. But if you say, okay, what was I doing to my body for 60 years or 50 years or however long it was uh, that, um, uh, that uh, put a burden on my body that all of a sudden the straw broke the camel's back and I became symptomatic? That's where you have power. Do you understand what I'm saying, Ray? It's not to beat you up or to make you wrong in any way, shape, or form. It's to make you stronger and more, uh, more powerful the, at, at helping reverse this thing. Are you with me? I understand. Okay, good. So usually problems begin at the level of the gut. That's where the attack comes in. Lou Gehrig's disease is an inflammatory, just for the listeners, Lou Gehrig's disease, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, is when you get this, it's, it's just uh, arthritis of the, of the nerves and the muscles. It's a sclerotic condition, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, means a thickening, fibers start to form. These are all the manifestation of a whacked out immune system. 
of an over-inflammatory response. For some reason, the body is inflaming, and it's been chronically inflaming before you have ALS. Why does it inflame? Inflammation is defense. So this is a fundamental idea in this whole process. Inflammation is behind all disease, and inflammation is defense. So when you have a defensive response like inflammation, the one thing, and I'm, I'm talking to everybody out there who's dealing with a degenerative disease, not just Ray. The one thing you want to focus on when you have an inflammatory slash defensive response is what is the, what is the offending agent? Are you following me here, Ray? Are you, are, am I okay? Yeah. Okay, good. So... Uh, so the, what is the offending agent? Well, how does the offending agent get into the body? That's the most important consideration. There's lots of offending agents. We don't care about those. We care about the ones that get in the body. How do they get in the body? Well, if you're injecting them through your skin, that's one way they can get in the body. And when I say the body, I mean in the blood. That's what that means, in the body. So when they get into the, you can get them into the body or into the blood if you're injecting them. We're going to scratch that off the list because you don't sound like you've been injecting things. So we'll scratch that off the list. How else can they get into the body and the blood? We well, can breathe them. All right, that happens sometimes, and certainly our air, uh, indoor and outdoor, is not wonderful. And so there are things in the air. But what is the most likely port of entry into the blood going to be, uh, especially considering the fact that most of what we put into the system through this portal is completely foreign to the body? It's digestion. It's food and digestion. Are you with me? Yes. Are you? Okay. So the most likely suspect... It's kind of like when a murder mystery, you know, when they have a murder, the husband gets murdered, who's the first likely suspect they go to? Or when the wife gets murdered, who's the first likely suspect or the boyfriend or the girlfriend? It's the spouse or the loved one. Not that they always did it, but that's the most likely suspect. In terms of health, the most likely suspect for the mystery, the, the ALS mystery, the Lou Gehrig's disease mystery, is going to be food and digestion, period. How can you prove this to yourself? I'll tell you when we come back from our break. I'll show you how you can prove this to yourself that this is right and how you can prove this to, prove this to yourself uh, more than likely uh, that this is the cause or the beginning of your ALS and your Lou Gehrig's disease. So don't go away, Ray. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be right back. We're back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Ray in California. You there, Ray? Still there. Okay, good. So we're talking uh, ALS, amyotropic lateral sclerosis. Here's the thing, Ray. Everything I said to you is theoretical. I want to make this practical for you. Stop eating for three days, all right? If you stop eating for three days, you're going to notice that your symptoms start to resolve that you're going to feel better. Now, you've got to eat again, obviously. But once you go into that ketogenic phase where your body is kind of uh, 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 digesting its own fat in order to get you energy, you know what I'm saying? You're going to want to go ketogenic is basically what you want to do, the ketogenic diet. And the, way, the best way to start the ketogenic diet is with a two- or three-day fast because that will also stop the toxicity that's getting into your system. So you're going to start to feel better. Can you do a fast for three days or a swear will be cleanse if you can't do a fast? Can you do that for three days? Yeah. Okay, I want yeah. you to do that for three days. I want you to call me back, hopefully on the radio program so everybody can hear. Or uh, if you don't want to get on the air, at least uh, contact me on my email. And I'm going to work with you. There's much more. But I, can, will you do that for me? Will you come on the air after, after you've done this and, and tell everybody how you feel? Because I want everybody to hear. You're going to feel better okay. for the three-day fast, okay? A swervy cleanse. Okay. Then you're going to want to start to do nutrients that help build the gut. Uh, chicken soup with the bones. Lots of it. Uh, pay it I should say... After you do your food, if you really want to do this right, after you do your fast, you want to do a food diary and start paying attention to how your body responds to certain foods. Are you with me? It could be foods that yeah. you think are good. It sounds like, it sounds like you've been, you know, you, you're very well educated in these ideas, and that's great. But you may have one or two wrong ideas, and you may have been doing them over and over again. You know what I'm saying? Some of you may, may have been thinking that beans were good for you. For example, I'm not saying that's what happened, but for example, or that cabbage was good for you, and it may have been bad for you. It's kind of like that. It's not like there's one way. Of, there's not like there's j foods that are good for everybody or foods that are bad for everybody. We all have our own battles to face, uh, our own battles to face, or our own uh, enemies to face when it comes to food. 
So you got to kind of keep track of that. Then you're going to want to support the gut at all levels. Chicken, homemade chicken soup, as I said, is very helpful. Excuse me. Aloe vera is going to be helpful. <clears throat> uh, the Fucoid Z from Longevity can be very helpful. Certainly probiotics. I would get on the nightly essence uh, and take lots of them. Eat fermented vegetables, vegetable juices. The less calories you put in your system, Ray, the better off you're going to be. So try to go nutritionally dense. Do smoothies. Find a protein that you can use and do smoothies. You may have a problem with protein, uh, so you're gonna be have to be a little careful. Whey might be a problem for you. Egg might be a problem for you. Uh, if you don't, do you have any of these issues? Uh, can you turn your radio off there, buddy, Ray? I don't, I don't know. Have that, a radio. You don't have a radio on. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know if they can hear me in the studio. I've got this terrible echo. Um, Okay, so you're going to focus on protein, liquid protein especially. Keep your calories down to a minimum and eat nutritionally dense. Veggie juices, fermented veggies, uh, uh, smoothies, yogurt. If you can do yogurt, goat yogurt tends to be a little easier than sheep yogurt. Uh, And then there's wonderful micronutrients that you're going to want to use. Uh, uh, B-complex, Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Ultimate EFAs. Uh, by the way, even with a diagnosis of Lou Gehrig's disease, you can still be just fine and have a strong, vital body. So, so all of these are going to make a huge difference in your life. Zinc, 50 milligrams a day, 400 IU of vitamin E a day. I would get on alpha lipoic acid, maybe 400 milligrams a day, NAC. Um, I said EFAs, but really all your uh, fats and fatty vitamins together, vitamin A, 20,000 IU a day. There's so many things you could do here. Selenium, don't forget your ultimate selenium, the glucogel caps. Uh, and, and there's a couple more things. I don't want to. I don't want to bombard you with supplements, but a couple more things that are non-supplement that can help you. Number one, exercise. Are you exercising? Working out? Getting on a treadmill? Yeah. Or a, up and down? Don't stop. Do it twice a day. Okay. Not a lot. You don't need a lot of intense. You don't need to be in the gym for an hour. You just need to feel uncomfortable. You follow me, Ray? Does it make sense? Okay, and then the last piece of the puzzle is relax, lighten up your body, meditate, breathe, take baths, activate that relaxation response system. I am guaranteeing you results with this program. If you want, and of course the Healthy Start Pack, is that goes without saying. Beyond Tangy Tangerine, uh, the uh, Osteomag, and as I said, the Ultimate EFA. I'm guaranteeing you results, whether you're completely cured, I don't know, because you're going to be in charge of that. But I'm guaranteeing you results if you do this program. And I'd love it if you could call back. Okay, and and this is not a death sentence by any means. By any means, don't let anybody tell you it is. And drugs are not going to help you, period. End of story. There's nothing in the doctor's magical bag of tricks that can help help you with ALS. So you really have no option but to do what I just told you to do, which is guaranteed going to help you. Okay? Okay. So what? So what's what are you gonna? What did you take home here? What's the what's the leave home the take home message from all this? It is not a death sentence, and if I change my ways and put uh, and practice what you have outlined right now, then I should see some significant results. Praise God. That is awesome. That's exactly the take-home message. I hope everybody heard that. So you're going to call us back, right? I will call back. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Have a great day, man. Good luck. God bless. Thank, we'll talk thank to you soon. Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Let's go to Curtis in West Virginia. What's up, Curtis? Welcome to the Bright Side. As far as I said, I've talked to you several times before. Okay. Uh, I listen to you about every day. Okay. Uh, my question is is on this uh, uh, <clears throat> this vitamin C. What is your opinion of vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams, vitamin C, which, of course, got ascorbic acid in it, and it's also got uh, other ingredients in it. What is your opinion on how good that is for your health? Uh-huh. That's no, that's you. Boy, that's a great question. I mean, there's no other words than to say monumental. I, I don't know. Think of, the, think of the superlatives. That means huge. That means gargantuan. That means gigantic. That means yeah. unbelievable. That's where it is. There's no, I don't, can't even come up with the words to say how unbelievable vitamin C is from a biochemical standpoint, from a divine standpoint, from a, uh, a, uh, a physiologic standpoint. I mean, there's just unbelievable therapeutic standpoint how many why vitamin c is just gargantuan it's the babe ruth of vitamins it's the babe ruth of supplements you know what i'm saying there's no way to describe it and by the way ascorbic acid is vitamin c let me say this again because i hear people on i hear well-meaning alternative practitioners and chiropractors and some not well-meaning salespeople saying vitamin c is not ascorbic acid that's not true 
That is not true. They don't know chemistry. It's a synonym. It's exactly the same. And at the level of the cell, the cell is taking in something called ascorbate, which is kind of like ascorbic acid, as well as probably ascorbic acid. Uh, but basically, it's ascorbic acid and ascorbate that are at the cell level, period. And you reverse scurvy with vitamin C, ascor ascorbate or ascorbic acid. In fact, the name ascorbate means without scurvy, ascorbate, without scurvy in Latin. It's so anybody that tells you it's not, vitamin C is not ascorbic acid, doesn't know what they're talking about, period, period. That's just biochemistry. Now, they will tell you, they will tell you, hang, let me just say this real quick. They will tell you that, there, that if you have other things in the vitamin C, it works better and natural vitamin C is better. And that is true. Natural is always better. There's no getting around that. But you cannot get the doses that you need in a so-called fruit and vegetable, number one. Uh, and if you're, if you're deficient, you want to pound that vitamin C in the system because the cell at the end of the day is using the vitamin C, not the bioflavonoids and the other things with the vitamin C that improve absorption, no, no doubt about it. I am a big believer in getting your nutrients from foods, and I wish I didn't have to supplement, but I do. And the therapeutic value of this stuff is not only in the literature and it's voluminous, just everywhere you look, if you just do a search on it, it's in my experience personally. And it's probably in yours too, if you've ever had a cold coming on and you've taken high doses of vitamin C, you'll notice that the cold is either shorter duration or you don't even get the cold. Go ahead, I'm sorry, what were you, what were you gonna say, Curtis? Well, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'll call you back another day and talk to you more about this because we're running out of time. I am out of time, yes. Go ahead, but real quick, anyhow, I have a few minutes, a few seconds. I have, I've gotten positive results from it. And, uh, but you hear all this stuff on other programs and other doctors say don't use it because it's laboratory. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. At the level of right. the cell, <laughs> at the level of the cell, the cell is taken in the vitamin C. That's not right. to say natural is not better because it is. I, I want to be very clear. But at the level of the cell, which is what we're talking about here, vitamin C is just ascorbate or ascorbic acid. It's not a berry. It's not a cherry. It's not, you know, a red pepper. It's not cantaloupe. It's not the food source. It's the molecule. And this nonsense about synthetic versus, versus natural needs to be understood. Again, natural is always better, but it, synthetic is at the molecular level. The cell doesn't know whether it's synthetic or natural at all. I got a, uh, well, I'll talk about this tomorrow. I, uh, I got a really interesting letter about uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and I'll try to touch on this tomorrow. Uh, all right, that's it. Thanks for listening to the. Thank you, Curtis. Appreciate your call. And thank you to everyone for listening to the Bright Side. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. And please check out my vitamin C rich, vitamin C packed and loaded truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, beautiful, wonderful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.